We can't just say we have a better way of handling things, especially when we're talking about handling these differences like the way contracts work or intellectual property is protected or corporate reputation is built. I think we all know that we have to adapt to local conditions when we do things, but seemingly, especially in the early days of globalization, people made amazing mistakes. For example, when Carrefour built its supermarkets in China, it put in French baguette bakeries. Uh, one of the most amazing ones was Walmart, and when it went in to open its first store in Mexico, all the electrical goods were 115 volts neglecting the fact that Mexico uses 240, like Europe. We've moved away from those kind of simple mistakes these days. Most companies who are global have understood how they have to adapt to those kind of obvious things in a foreign market, an emerging market. But it's moved to more difficult kinds of things like the role of the judiciary or what intellectual property protection means or the fact that tax rates and tax policies might vary between provinces, as is in the case of China. So now the question is, are companies really able to respond to adapt to those more difficult kinds of things that are hard to get your hands around, can't be measured quantitatively, but still are very important if we're going to be successful in adapting ourselves to the emerging market. We do have quite well-developed tools and techniques to help us adapt to these emerging markets, but I think there are three reasons why companies often don't do it or find it difficult. The first is what I call unquestioned assumptions. There's so many things we don't even occur to us that it might be different. It's just so much part of what we're used to. What does it mean when you write a contract? Is it enforceable? So we have to first really think about those unquestioned assumptions and make sure we don't just assume that things are going to be like at home. The second reason why people often fail to adapt is, is a rational one. It's the cost of adaptation. It's cheaper to do the same thing all over the world. But there comes a point that we have to ask ourselves, it might be cheaper, but is it actually going to work? So perhaps we have to carry the cost of the adaptation. And the third important reason why it's especially difficult for many Western firms to adapt to these emerging markets is that we have rules and requirements at home that actually prevent us from doing what the locals would do. And that's a difficult balance as to how to maintain uh, adherence to the rules that we have at home and yet adapt to the foreign market. So I don't say it's easy. We have the tools, but there are these three reasons why companies often find it difficult to do it in practice. A lot of foreign firms come and say, look, we've got a better mousetrap. We've got a better way of handling contracts, handling intellectual property, handling disputes and so forth. And therefore, since we bring this better mousetrap, everyone must beat a path to our door and immediately say, yes, we'll adopt that. But of course, you have to take into account the context of these emerging markets and the fact that that better mousetrap might not be better in that context. Let me give you the example. Uh, corporate rep reputation in China. A lot of companies are very concerned with corporate reputation, both uh, multinationals in China and increasingly Chinese companies. But what does corporate reputation mean in China? Well, especially at the moment, the key things are your product quality, how you treat customers, and the behavior of the senior management who are often equated with the company because of personalization is very important in China. So we come along and say we've got a governance system, a whistleblowing policy, a non-discrimination uh, set of papers and procedures, and they say, that doesn't look like a better mousetrap to us in our context because we're interested in product quality, how you treat customers, and the behavior of our senior management as the things which really affect corporate reputations. What we started to look at is, can you measure them by looking at the way that players, companies, 
or government regulators or our stakeholders in a particular country react to a sort of certain kind of stimulus. So if I can use an analogy, it's a little bit like shining a light onto something and measuring it by looking at the shadow. And that's what we were trying to do, to say we can't measure differences in institutional context directly, but we can see the impact they have on the way parties in this environment react to a particular stimulus. And the stimulus we looked at in the paper was the introduction of the Basel II banking requirements. So this was a new set of regulations that came out of the international community. And by looking at how different emerging markets reacted differently to the, the implementation of those new regulations, we could actually measure differences in the institutional context. I certainly would approve of appointing people that have both that Western and Eastern experience and can bridge the gap. But I think there's something even more interesting about Tata appointing uh, someone who ran the Bombay Stock Exchange, and that is he's bringing experience of this institutional culture, the way the, the processes of politics, of law, and so forth, of culture work, which all come together in a place like the Stock Exchange. And he's bringing those things, the problem of emerging markets. And I think that's a good example of the move from adapting to simple things that we know how to measure, like purchasing power or age of the, the consumers, to these more complicated things we have to adjust to, like politics, culture, and the way laws or taxation works in a particular environment. We could look at different kinds of changes that happen. Maybe the uh, rise of intellectual property protection pressures in a place like China or India. See how the institutions and players responded to that and again check our shadow out there as a mechanism to measure or find a proxy to to see how to adapt to these things that are very difficult to pin down if you try to do it directly. So that's the next step in our research to try and see how generalizable are the kind of results that we found and is the methodology of this light and shadow uh, usable for different kinds of institutional differences and different kinds of adaptation problems across different emerging markets.